Hey, how's it going everybody? So for this video, we're gonna go over the problem asteroid collision. And this is a problem asked a lot at Lyft. So we are given an array asteroids of integers representing asteroids in a row. For each asteroid, the absolute value represents its size and the sign represents its direction. Positive meaning right, negative meaning left. Each asteroid moves at the same speed. Find out the state of the asteroids after all collisions. If two asteroids meet, the smaller one will explode. If both are the same size, both will explode. Two asteroids moving in the same direction will never meet. So I know the description may sound confusing. So all it's asking us to do is we are given an integer array where we're given positive and negative numbers. Positive numbers will always be moving right and negative numbers will always be moving left and they always move at the same speed. So we're pretty much just going to determine based on all the directions that, that these numbers are going, how many asteroids or what asteroids will be left after all of the collisions are over. So for the first example, we have 10 to negative five. So all this problem wants us to do is to find out what numbers are left over after the collisions. So positive numbers will move right and negative numbers will move left. So this 10 will move right, this two will move right, and then this negative five will move left, right? So we only care about two numbers that are colliding. So this two and the negative five, they're going to collide with each other. And since the negative five, if we did the absolute value of negative five is five, that's greater than two. So what that means is this two will end up getting removed from our output. So this negative five will collide with the two, but the negative five will come out on top. So after the negative five and two collide, we would just be left with 10 and negative five. But keep in mind, this negative five is still moving to the left. So now we need to compare the 10 and the negative five. And obviously 10 is greater than five. So what that means now is the negative five is gonna be removed. So now this will be removed completely. And by the end of both of those collisions, we are only left with the number 10. So our result should just return the array 10. So another example we have, we have numbers 10, five and negative five and positive number moving right, positive number moving right and negative number moving left. But this is kind of an extra edge case we're gonna to have to consider. So since we have to look at this five and negative five because they're gonna run into each other, both of them are of equal size, right? Because if we did five is equal to the absolute value of five, right? So in this scenario, both of these asteroids are going to be removed. So both of them will be removed and then we're just left with this 10 moving right. So also from this input, we would just return 10. So a very important part to solving this problem is being able to recognize when to compare two numbers that are next to each other. And the trick is that anytime you encounter a positive number and then a negative number immediately after, you know you need to compare those numbers because they will for sure be colliding. We could have a bunch of positive numbers, right? Or a bunch of negative numbers. And this, none of these would collide. So this array would not collide at all. And this array would not collide at all because all of the elements in this array are moving to the right and all the elements in this array are moving left. However, when we do have a mix of positive and negative numbers, we know to check the pairings if the number directly after a positive number is negative. So to solve this problem, we're going to be utilizing a stack. A stack is gonna help us because as we are iterating over our input array, we're gonna add the asteroids inside of the stack and this will allow us to do comparisons on the current number we're looking at and then the top element on the stack. Because if the number on the left is positive and the number on the right is negative, that means those asteroids are for sure going to collide and we have to determine which one will beat one another. So for this example, let's write out the directions that all of these numbers are going to go.
Okay, and now let's initialize our stack. So we'll have a stack down here, and we're going to have a pointer that's starting at index 0, right? So since our stack is currently empty, we can just add this number inside of the stack. So we're going to add negative 2 inside of the stack, and then we're going to iterate forward. And any time we encounter a positive number, we can immediately add that number to the stack. So we're going to add 10 to the stack. The reason why we can just add positive numbers to the stack is because we haven't gotten to a point where a negative number is directly on the right side of our positive number. So whenever we encounter positive numbers, we just immediately add it to the stack. And then we can iterate forward. However, now in this case, we do have a negative number. So what that tells us is we need to check the number that's on the top of the stack. So we're going to compare 10 and 20. Obviously, 20 is greater. So what that tells us is negative 20 is going to beat 10. So we have to pop from our stack now. So this 10 will get removed. And this asteroid is still moving to the left, right? So now we're going to compare negative 20 with negative 2. But since both of those numbers are moving in the same direction, we don't need to do anything else. All we need to do now is add negative 20 inside of our stack. And then we're going to iterate forward again. Since it's a positive number, we can just add it to our stack. Iterate forward again, add the 2 iterate forward, add the 1, iterate forward again. But now in this scenario, we have a negative number. So we need to check the top element on the stack. So we're going to compare 1 with 5. So obviously, 5 is greater than 1. So what that tells us is we need to pop from our stack because this 1 is going to get beaten out. So 1 will get removed. And then we need to continuously check from our stack right now. So we need to compare 5 with 2. 5 is greater than 2. So we need to pop from our stack again. And now we're going to check negative 5 and 5. Obviously, both of those numbers are equal once we do an absolute value of negative 5. So what that means is they're going to cancel each other out. That goes back to the second example that we talked about. So in this scenario, the 5 will still get pulled from our stack. However, we will not add this negative 5 inside of our stack because they collided with each other and canceled each other out. And so by the end of iteration, we're only left with a negative 2 and a negative 20. So our final output would be negative 2, negative 20. So that is how you solve this problem. Let's jump over to the code and I'll show you guys how we can implement this. So the first thing we need to do is initialize a stack, right? A stack of integers. And then we need to iterate over our asteroids array. So we're going to do a for loop over asteroids. And let's extract the asteroid that we're currently looking at as well. So asteroids at index i. So the first case it, we need to check for is if our asteroid is greater than 0. If it's greater than 0, we can immediately add that number to our stack, right? Because it's a positive number. So if asteroid is greater than 0, just add the number to the stack. If this is not true, then our asteroid must be negative, right? And so in this scenario, we need to continuously check the elements that are already in our stack to determine if we need to pop previous asteroids that we have seen. So for this, we have to do a while loop. And we're going to determine if the top element is a positive number. If the top element is a positive number, what that means is we have a positive number on the left and a negative number on the right, which means they will for sure collide. And we need to determine which one is going to beat out the other. So we need to just check if our stack is not empty, right? Because we don't want to pull from a stack that is empty. And if the last element, the, when we peak our stack, if the last element in our stack, if it's greater than 0, so we have to ensure that the number on the left is actually a positive number, 
right? Because if it's a negative number, then it doesn't even matter. We can just add the negative number inside of our stack, right? Because a negative number and a negative number directly next to each other will just be going left together. And then the last check is we need to determine which one is greater. So if the negative number on the right is greater than the number on the left, then that right number is going to beat out the left number. And that means we need to pop from the stack. So we can say and stack.peak if it's less than the minus of the asteroid. Because we know when if we get to this point, asteroid must be negative. Because we're doing a check here. If asteroid is greater than zero, that means if we get here, we can immediately flip the sign. So we, we could also do math.absolute value if we wanted to, but just doing a, a minus sign just kind of simplifies it. So if this statement evaluates to true, we need to pop from our stack. So this while loop is going to handle all the cases where we have a negative number on the right that is greater than the positive numbers on the left. It will, it will remove those positive numbers. However, we still need to handle two more cases. We need to know when we need to add negative numbers inside of our stack, so we need to handle that. And then the second thing is we need to find out when we should pull from the queue again under the scenario where the element on the right and the element on the left are equal to each other and colliding. Because in that scenario, they're, they're both going to cancel each other out. And in this while loop, we do not handle that. So let's handle the case where we push to the stack negative numbers. So if we get to this point and our stack is empty, we, we know we can just immediately add that number to the stack. So if our stack is empty, or if our number that is last in the stack, so if we peek from our stack and it's a negative number, we know we can just immediately push that number to the stack because both of those numbers will be moving in the same direction. So if stack.peak is less than zero, if either of those statements evaluate to true, we can just push our asteroid. Now we're going to do the check if the number on the left and the number on the right are equal to each other. So if stack.peak is equal to minus asteroid, if they're equal, then we need to stack.pop. So let's look at an example. Let's say we had 10, 5, and negative 5, right? In this scenario, right, we'd first add in 10 to our stack, and then we'd add in 5 to our stack, and then we'd get to this part, right? Because we'd get to a negative number. And since this would not evaluate because stack.peak would be 5, and it's not less than 5, because 5 and 5 are equal. So this would not evaluate either, because if we peak on our stack, we'd have a positive number. So it would go to this else if statement. And when we peak, 5 is equal to 5, that means we will remove that 5, and we will also not add the negative 5 inside of our stack. So that's how we actually cancel out both of those asteroids under the scenario when they are the same number. So now all we need to do is add in these numbers in our stack to an output integer array. So let's do that. So we can say result is equal to a new int array of stack.size. And let's iterate over our result to populate it. And so we're going to be building this result array backwards because a stack, it always is last in first out, right? So we're going to start it at result.length minus one, and it's going to go up to zero. And we can say result at index i is equal to stack.pop. And then we just return our result. So let's submit this. 
And there we go. So our time complexity is going to be big O of N, where N is the number of asteroids that we have in our input array. I know it may seem like this is an N squared algorithm because we do have this nested while loop, but our algorithm is only going to push and pop in our stack for each asteroid a single time. And then our space complexity is also big O of N because we have to initialize this stack. And in the worst case, we have all positive numbers or all negative numbers, and we will have to add every single element from our asteroids array inside of our stack. So that's why it's big O of N. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, please feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Let me know if there's any other types of algorithms you would like me to solve. I'm really open to doing any one of them. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.